Hi everyone, in this video I will explain how to read and analyze the Vine diagram on Nissan. I will also take the camera on the car to show you guys how to find the connectors, wires and the pins on the car as well. So please stay with us until the end of the video. Let's start by having a look at the Vine diagram for starting system. Uh, many manufacturers provide the wine diagram separate from the workshop manual. So you have uh, some files for wine diagram, some others for the workshop manual. But what we have for the Nissan, uh, if you look at this workshop manual, uh, you have the uh, workshop manual and wine diagram together. So wine, so wine diagram is part of the workshop manual. For example, for here, if we look for the wine diagram for the starting system, so we need to find this page. So not only you have the wine diagram right here, you have the workshop manual as well. So in this video, we're going to focus only on the uh, wiring diagram. Uh, I'm going to start from the starting system first, and then, as I said earlier, I'm going to show you guys how to read the wiring diagram, how to find the wires and the connectors on the car for a couple of other components. So we will start from the starting system, then I'm going to show you how to find the wiring on engine and for one more components. So what we have here is the starting system wiring diagram. First of all, for any of these components, uh, the first thing that you need to do before reading any wiring diagram is to uh, identify the components to see what components you have right here. So for any component, you have the component name written just next to that component. For example, this one is ignition switch. You see the ignition switch right here. And what you see just underneath this one, this one is the connector code. So you have the component name and the connector code together. So if we try to identify other components, what we have here, this one is a, a PN switch or inhibitor switch. So when you have a starting system on a car with automatic transmission, uh, you have inhibitor switch. So what's going to happen? You won't be able to start the car if transmission is located on a drive or reverse. So it means uh, this switch is going to let you to start the car only in park uh, or neutral. Okay, so this is the uh, so this is the first component. What else we have? So we already have the ignition switch. We have the uh, park neutral switch. Uh, what we have right here, this is actually engine room fuse box. As you see, is referring right here, engine room fuse box. And these two numbers down here, they are actually the connector codes on the engine room fuse box that we're going to need in this system. What else? We have the starter relay right here, which is inside the engine room fuse box. And if I scroll down, you have the starter motor right here. And... I have the connector details right here uh, after the wind diagram. So I'm going to need these connector codes and details for winding the wiring as well. Okay. So what other information I have here? So as you know, for starting the car, uh, this is actually the best and the main ideas that you need for reading any wind diagram. So if you're going to read any wine diagram, you need to have one start point. Okay, so you need to start from one point to start reading your wine diagram. So it means you cannot just jump uh, to start a relay and see how this starting system works. So this is not only for a starting system. This is for any other system as well. You can start from that point that you try to activate that system. So it's going to be one switch or any other component that you use for activating that system. So in this one, it's going to be ignition switch. So it means you start from the ignition switch to activate 
the system. So I'm gonna I'm gonna explain a little how to uh, follow the wiring to read the wiring diagram. Then I'm gonna give you all the details for finding the wires and the connectors and the pins uh, for troubleshooting. So the first thing that we do for starting the car is we try to turn the ignition switch. So when you turn the ignition switch, your ignition switch from the off position is going to be right here on a start position. So this is the first thing that you will do. What, so what happens when you try to rotate the ignition switch to crank the engine? So before the ignition switch, we have the battery right here. And this battery from this fuse provides the battery positive all the way from here to your ignition switch. So you have the battery positive right here. So it means when you turn the ignition switch to start position, you are actually providing this battery positive from here to this wire. Okay, so all the way to here, we have the battery positive. So this path battery positive already reached to uh, engine control module. So it's going to travel from here, from this pin number 21 on uh, uh, engine room fuse box that we will find it later on because we need to know where is this pin 21 because it's going to be inside one of these two connectors, but I'm going to show you later to find this pin, to find the connector and to find the pin. So this battery positive is going to travel all the way from here to a starter relay. So it means on the starter relay, we have battery positive here, ready to be provided to start a solenoid. Uh, in the meantime, when you are turning the ignition switch to start position, if your uh, inhibitor switch or PN switch or your shift lever, if your shift lever is located on arc or neutral, okay, it means you have the battery positive provided from here all the way to this point because obviously for your relay you're gonna need a battery positive and negative to energize the relay okay so this battery positive is provided from here you have the positive right here and this negative is provided from starter motor cpu which is inside the engine room fuse box so the battery positive and negative is provided to the relay so what's going to happen uh, i assume that you guys know how to check the relay if you don't uh, we have one video for checking any different type of relays that i will put the link in the description you can find it over there so right after providing this battery positive and negative to the relay this relay will be energized so it means it's it's going to create the electromagnetic uh, electromagnetic field so this electromagnetic field is going to close this switch i'm saying this switch so this switch will be closed this is the starter relay switch so when this switch is closed it means it's actually it's going to provide this battery positive from here to this pin number 19. this pin number 19 this is actually the output of the starter relay which is going to go from here all uh, toward the uh, a starter solenoid but let's see what happens over there so this one is the starter solenoid so what we had earlier we had the battery positive provided from here from this pin number 19 to the starter solenoid so we have the starter solenoid right here and if you guys uh, remember on the starter solenoid we have three terminals one is s terminal the other one is b terminal and the other one is m terminal uh, m terminal goes directly from the starter solenoid to the starter motor right here and this b terminal comes from the battery okay so right after providing the battery positive to the starter this one is the battery positive as well this battery positive is going to energize the starter uh, solenoid okay so when a starter solenoid is uh, energized it's gonna bypass these two pins so what happens right now when the starter solenoid is energized this battery positive is gonna travel from here from there 
to a starter motor. This is what Solenoid is gonna is gonna do. Okay. So this was how to read the wiring diagram, how to actually follow the wiring to read the wiring diagram step by step. Let's see uh, how how we can find uh, the details because if you if you think that your starting system doesn't work, so for example if you if you are not able to crank the engine, there's going to be some problem in the starting system. So you check the battery, battery is fine. You're going to go for all other components. Uh, I know the easiest one is to check the starter relay, but sometimes the starter relay is okay. So you need to follow the wiring to check uh, some other wirings or the pins to make sure they are okay or not. Okay. Uh, first of all, for as I said earlier, for any uh, components like here for engine room, like this one, for the engine room fuse box, you have two connectors for a starting system. So these two connectors are relevant for the starting system. Uh, for example, you, are, you don't have uh, the starting system working, okay? So you know, as I said earlier, you know that right after turning the ignition switch to start position, you're gonna have the battery positive right here, okay? So you, you're gonna have the battery positive right here. But you remove the starter relay and you check the battery positive at this point on the fuse box. So you see when you turn the ignition switch to, uh, to a start position, you are not getting this battery positive right here on the uh, engine fuse box after removing the relay. So what happens, you have to check all this section, right? Because that the rest is inside the fuse box, you, you're going to need to check this, this section. Okay, so what you need, the first, the easiest one uh, is to check here because you already checked the fuse box inside the fuse box. You didn't get any power. You're going to make sure the problem is from this part of the wiring or from the other components before that, maybe ignition switch. So for checking this section of the wiring, you need to find this pin uh, on the engine fuse box, but ha but just having this uh, information that uh, pin number is 21 is not going to be the is not going to be everything you need. You're going to need the pin number. You're going to need the uh, to find the connector as well, and you're going to need the uh, wire color as well. The first thing for the wire color, we have the wire code. We have the wire color code right here. W4 white so this one this one means your wire is white okay so this is referring to the wire color you know that this wire is white so we have this pin number 21 which is connected to a white wire but which connector we have these two connectors e44 and e45 we're gonna see 21 is located inside which one of these two connectors. So as I said earlier, uh, right after the wiring diagram, you have the connector details uh, mentioned. So we have all the connectors relevant for the, this wiring diagram. So we are looking for E44 and E45, okay? For these two connectors, first of all, we have the connector configuration. This is the connector configuration for E44, and this one is for E45. Okay, but what are other information we have? First of all, we have the connector configuration and we have the connector color as well. So BR for brown and W again for white. So we know that these two connectors uh, are white and brown. Okay, so it's going to be easier to find them because we know how many pins we have inside the connector. We have the connector configuration and the connector's uh, color. So the pin number that we are after is pin number 21. So if you look at the E44, we have the 21 just right here. But in E45, there is no 21. So it means we need to find E45, connector E45 on the engine 
fuse box. But uh, which one is exactly 21? This connector is showing on the fuse box or on the connector side. And it's showing from the front side of the connector or from the back. This is going to help. What you have here is this one. So what you see on the connector, all these numbers, as you see right here on this one, this one is showing that all these numbers are showing the uh, pin numbers from the back of the connector. So that's why you have this, these letters in here, harness side. So it means all these numbers are showing the pins from the back of the connector, okay? On the harness side, not on the component side. So it's gonna be really easy now to find it. Right. I'm going to show uh, many of these on the car as well. So you will find. Uh, so you will know how to find them on the on the car as well. So what we know right now for finding that pin. So we know for finding that pin, we know that there is a pin. Number 21. Uh, which is connected to actually a white wire and it's it is inside the uh, connector e44 and this connector is uh, a white connector and we know that this connector is actually one of the connectors on engine room fuse box all right so all the information that we got from the wine diagram they are right here so it's Super easy to find the connector right now because you have the connector color, you have the connector code, you have the pin number, and you know which where is the pin number. And here is giving you some other information about the about the pin. It's super easy to find it out. But on the other hand, in another scenario, if you try to crank the engine and you see the engine is not cranking and you find the starter relay inside the fuse box, you put your finger on the starter relay and someone else is cranking, you see that a starter relay is not clicking. Okay, when a starter relay is not clicking, it means there is something wrong on the on the coil, on the starter relay winding. So what's gonna happen, you need to check this positive and this negative. So for checking the positive, it's really easy. You just need to uh, take the relay out and check the voltage just right here after removing the relay on the fuse box. So you remove the relay, you check the voltage over there. If you have the battery voltage, it's all good. If you don't, you need to check this section of the wiring to make sure the battery positive is coming through and what section is faulty. So what are we going to do right now? Again, right here, if we are going to check this section of the wiring, the easiest way is to find this pin. So we are looking for pin number 35. It's going to be again inside one of these two connectors. And the wire color is brown. OK, easy. Let's go and find the uh, pin number 35 with the brown wire. So again, we need to look for look at the E44 and E45. And if you see pin number 35, this time is located here. So it means now we are looking for pin number 35, uh, pin 35 with a brown wire. And we have the location. We know it's located inside the connector E45. And the connector color this time is brown. Okay, which is brown. And where is it located? You have the location right here from the back of the connector. Really, really easy to, to find. So what you see here is the mass airflow sensor or generally mass sensor. So what we have here, we have three pins right here on the mass airflow sensor. So we have one pin coming from here, which is coming from the ECM relay. 
so apparently this one is the battery positive is the main positive which we need for the for the sensor so this one is coming uh, through a brown wire and it's connected to pin number two and it's connected to pin number two on this connector So we know that the mass airflow sensor connector code is F31 and the battery positive or the main power supply for the sensor is coming through a brown wire and is connected to pin number two. But what are the other two wires? So one of them, pin number three, pin number three, this one, is actually uh, the sensor ground. This is a sensor ground and it's coming from a light green. Light green wire. Okay, so this is the sensor ground, pin number three. And pin number four here, this one is actually the sensor signal. This one is the mass airflow sensor signal, which is coming through a uh, green wire. So this one, uh, pin number three is a light green. This one is the green. So for the ground, this is the ground, which is connected to the ECM. This ground is connected to pin number 52 on the ECM engine control module to actually pin for, so pin number 52 is actually inside one of these connectors, E16, F10, and F11. So here is the E16, here is F10, and here is the F11. So which one is 52? If you look at this one, 52 is right here. So this is 52, which is connected to a light green wire. So this one is actually ground. And the other wire, which is signal, which is going right here from uh, mass airflow sensor to ECM, uh, through a green wire is actually inside a uh, pin 45 which is connected to one of these two uh, connectors so 45 is right here as well this is 45 and we have a green wire connected over there but what about the connectors we already know uh, these two wires are inside F11 connector and as you see, F11 connector is a brown connector. So I'm going to show you this one on the uh, car as well. We will go and we will find the connector and I will show you uh, how to find these pins as well. So, but before going on the car, uh, I'm going to show you something quickly. Uh, the connector on the mass airflow sensor is F31, which is right here. So how many pins we have on F31? We have three pins shown right here but on the connector we have six pins so it's really important to know that what you see here is just one diagram for the mass airflow sensor but inside the mass airflow sensor we have actually another sensor which we call it intake air temperature sensor okay so it means in connector f31 we have three pins for mass airflow sensor two pins for intake and temperature sensor and one pin is empty so you're gonna see that on the car so what you see here is just part of the uh, wiring and the connector for mass airflow sensor not for intake air temperature sensor that one is shown in uh, another uh, wiring diagram okay let's go on the car and see how we can find all these uh, on a real car okay so they have this is the map sensor and this is the wiring diagram for the map sensor and uh what we have right here on the wiring for the map sensor we actually see just only three wires but as you see here we have five wires on the map sensor and that's because uh this one is uh map sensor and intake air temperature sensor so this wiring is not showing the intake air temperature sensor that's why we only have uh, three pins so if you are just checking the map sensor 
uh, and we are tr just trying to do the troubleshooting to see which one of these five wires are for the MAP sensor itself. We can just have a look at this one. So we have the pin numbers. Pin number two, it's actually the power supply coming from the ECM relay. Between, between pin number, between pin number three and four, this is pin number three, which is uh, a light green, uh, which is actually ground, and pin number four on the mass airflow sensor is a, a green wire, which is actually the signal. So this one is the signal. This one, the brown wire number two, uh, is the power supply coming from the relay, and number three is the ground with light green wire. So the first thing is, yeah, we have the colors over there. Obviously, color is gonna make everything everything easy for us. But I'm gonna show you how to find uh, these pins on in here. F31 is the connector on the MAF sensor. So if we look at the connector guide right here, this is the F31, and we know the connector uh, color is black, and this is actually what we have for the pin numbers. But as I said earlier. This connector is showing everything from the wiring side, from the harness side. That's why we have this guide in here. So it means what you see, so it means what you see on the map sensor, we need to start counting from here, not after disconnecting. So this is from the harness side. So it means starting from the left is number one and then number two. So. So number one is actually blank. We don't have any pin. This is empty. Number two, then three, four, five. They are all listed over there. So what we need in here, number two must be a brown uh, wire coming from the ECM relay. So this is exactly number two because number one is empty. This is number two, which is brown. Number three is a light green, which is ground. And we have number three, exactly light green. This one is ground. And, and the last one on mass airflow sensor is number four, which is a green wire. So here you see one, two, three, and four. That green is actually the uh, signal. So if you are checking the, so if you are trying to check the mass airflow sensor on this car, we know actually which wire is which. So it's gonna be really easy to check it out here's the ECM so here's the ECM I do have I do have three connectors and just by looking at it I can say this one is the bigger one but I need to take it out to see if the color is brown yeah as you see it is brown okay this is a brown connector so I need to look from the back okay I need to look from the back so I need to look from the back. So this is the connector. And uh, how do I know that the connector is not in this way or that way? You see, we, I have bigger pins right here. On the first two columns, I have bigger pins compared to the other ones. As I do in here, you see the bigger pins. So the other, so I'm looking for pin number 45, which color, green color. Okay, pin number 45. So I need to, at the top, I need to count one, two, three, four, four from the top. So if I look here from the top, this is number, this is one, two, three, and four from the top. Okay. So this is exactly that green wire that I found it earlier uh, on the math sensor. Right now, I found the other end on the ECM connector. So really easy. I found the connector code, which was F11. The connector color was brown, which is here. And I found the pin number 45 by looking at the wiring and comparing, uh, comparing uh, these two together. So uh, really easy to find. Let's have another test. Okay. Uh, let's just try to find the pin numbers and the pin locations 
uh, for another case. Let's think that you have P0710 80 fluid temperature sensor circuit fault. All right. So this is the wind diagram for for the sensor. So what we have, we have the temperature sensor right here, which is obviously located inside the transmission, by the way. And I have the TCM or transmission control module right here for uh, actually for for this car. Uh, it's on the passenger side, so I need to just show you on the uh, under the dash under the passenger side So this sensor is connected to the TCM Using these two wires. What are these two wires? One is the black wire with this pin pin number 42 which is a sensor ground and The other one is a brown wire which is connected to pin number 47 But what connector on the TCM side I have I do have this connector E32 so this is the connector code for finding these two But what is which one is E32? I do have E32 right here I do have E32 just right there So E32 is a gray connector so I know that my connector is gray one and I'm looking for 47, just right here, and 42, right there. So I'm looking for these two. 42 was black, and 47 was brown. So I need to find the connector first, and the pin numbers. Let's have a look. All right, guys, this is my TCM. This is the transmission control module. If you remember, my connector was E32 with gray color. So between these two, it's not really hard to find a gray one. Obviously, this is the one. So I need to take this one out. So this is the gray connector. When you look to the connector from the back, when you look to the connector from the back, first of all, you. You want to make sure if the connector is in this way or that way, right? So look at the connector shape. So I do have similar shape in here. So you need to match it with exactly this shape. So connector should be just like, connector should be like this. So I need to look at the connector just like this. All right, so which one is 47? 47 is just right here. The bottom row, just right here at the center. So the bottom row right here at the center. Second from the right, this is the brown wire for temperature sensor. So see, super easy to find. So what about the other one? Pin number 42, which is a black wire for sensor ground. On the second row, okay, the far right one, black one. So I'm gonna go to the second. This is the black one, the far right. You see that? So you see it's not really hard to find the wiring. The only thing is you just need to uh, focus on the wiring diagram and all the information provided by it so we can find everything uh, super easy.